Hi, this is Avinash, and today we are going to understand a problem which is quite popular in interviews, and this is related to a graph question which was asked by Amazon. So the question goes like this. So Amazon Fresh is a grocery delivery service that offers consumers the opportunity to purchase groceries online and have them delivered. Now the team is planning for a route for a delivery truck to deliver the customer orders in a certain space. The planner will create a delivery area for each order effective plan, effectively plan the route. The area is abstracted as a grid. So that is a 2D grid. Now, not all locations on the grid are accessible by the road. And the truck needs to deliver to a single point, a single delivery point. And we have to write an algorithm to determine the minimum distance required to deliver the items by the truck. Now, there are certain assumptions in this question. So some of the places in the delivery area cannot be directly accessed by the driver of the truck. And there are no roads in that particular location. And the delivery area is represented with a 2D grid of integers. And the 2D grid is represented with the help of zeros in the case where there is no suitable route and one where there is a suitable route or a suitable path. And the truck must start from the top left corner of the grid and can move up, right, left, and down. The truck must navigate around the areas where the roads are treated as one and it cannot go to the roads which are treated as zeros. And the destination is placed at nine. So the destination is a point on the grid which is denoted with the number nine. The input consists of one argument that is the grid, which is a 2D matrix. And the output should be an integer returning the minimum distance traveled by the truck to reach that particular delivery point, which is nine in the grid. In this case, if the path is not accessible or not reachable, then a minus one should be returned. The constraints are well within the integer boundaries for the rows and the columns. For a sample input denoted here, 100, 100, and 191, we can see that the shortest path will go from this particular index, which is at 00, to 1,0, to 2,0, and then to 2,1. So the entire path length will be 1, 2, and 3. So this is the question which was asked. And we have to solve this question. Now, as we understand that this is a typical BFS kind of a question in this case. So let us try to solve this. So uh, in this case, we have to create certain functions to check whether any point in the graph, whether it is inside the grid or not. So for that, we have to keep a checking functionality, which is a helper function to check whether each point or each coordinate that we are accessing in the grid is inside that particular matrix, 2D matrix. So for that, we can check if X is greater than or equal to zero and X is less than M. And this is a very standard process for all BFS or DFS approaches. And we're going to return it as true. And in the rest of the cases, we're going to return it as false. So this ensures that our truck stays inside the matrix. In the next case, we have to write our function to return. So let us call our function, uh, let's say minimum path, for example. And we have to take only one input in this. So in this case, it will be a two dimensional vector or a matrix of areas, okay? That area represents uh, the entire surface or the grid. So let us take int m equal to area dot size and int m equal to area zero dot size. Now the intuition behind going with the BFS approach is because uh, we have to find the shortest route. And what BFS does is it finds the shortest route in a level wise manner. So BFS does this in a level wise manner. And this only helps to find the shortest route in these cases in a, in a I would say quicker format or much more swiftly than compared to DFS strategy. So in this case, we have to find uh, the runtime is quite quick 
as compared to DFS. The reason being that we can access what is the shortest path through a queue in BFS in a level. So across a particular level, we get we are getting the shortest path. So this is kind of like a greedy uh, shortest path traversal here with Q, with Q, because we are using a BFS strategy. So now we have to, the idea behind this is to create a distance vector, distance 2D vector. And this distance vector will contain, uh, will be a 2D grid where each grid corresponds to an XY coordinate. And that particular coordinate in the distance vector will store the distance from the top left corner, that is a starting point to that particular distance uh, coordinate. So it will hold the distance from the start from the top left, that is 0, 0, right, in the matrix to the, uh, to any XY coordinate, to any XY coordinate, okay. So for this, let us write this uh, vector of vector of int. And let us write this in this format. Let us initialize this with minus one. Okay. Now the next step is building a queue because we need a BFS traversal. So we have to build a queue. So this queue is going to be a pair of integers. So why pair? Because we are storing the XY coordinates. XY for each point on the grid or each point on the area, we have to store it in a form of a pair. Okay. Now initialization. So initialization is going to be quite simple. So the starting point is fixed always as given in the assumption part. So the starting point is already fixed, uh, which is it can always start from the top left corner. So we can fix this as zero comma zero in this case. So Q dot push, we can just push zero comma zero in this case. And also distance of zero and zero will be mapped to zero in this in this for the starting point. Now we have to write a BFS loop, which implies uh, checking whether the queue is empty at each stage. Now, and we extract the topmost element of the queue. Okay. We take it as the front element of the queue and we pop it. Now, uh, let us write this as X. That means the first coordinate, ten dot first and Y equal to ten dot second, right? This is the first and the second coordinates. So we take the first and the second coordinates, okay? And the next step is to uh, check whether the current X and Y is the terminal position. And this can be checked by checking whether the area of X and Y resembles nine or not. So before that, also we have to make another checking condition that the distance of X and Y is zero. Okay. So if the distance of X and Y is zero, then that means that that particular node is not, not yet visited. And uh, if the area of X and Y is nine, then I'm going to return distance of x and y. So in this case, we are going to check if the distance is not equals to zero. That means uh, the distance is not, uh, not zero. Then that means that there is a suitable path from there to the terminal point. Only then in, the, in that case, we are keeping the area as uh, nine and we are taking that particular distance value. So this particular thing marks termination of the uh, termination of the path or the route which the truck is taking. So in continuation of that, so uh, we have we have also to keep uh, second vectors, which are vectors u and v, because we have to traverse on the uh, left and the right hand sides as well as the up and down. So for that we are keeping in vectors in u and v for simplicity. And this will give all possible combinations 
in the fourth direction okay for up right and left and down so u r l and d so all in this in this cases we are taking the vector u and p for all possible combinations so now we are taking the distance x and y and uh, we have to iterate for all the items in u and uh, also in v to update the temporary positions so you also have to update the temporary x and temporary y coordinates so this will be x plus u of i and in auto temp y this will be y plus b of a so this this gives us the updated items now we have to perform certain checks so check if the updated x and y are in the matrix and also we have to check if uh, the distance is minus one so that means it is unvisited that particular node or that particular part of the uh, of the grid is unvisited and also uh, we have to check if it is a reachable node or a movable node so area of x and y u x and u y updated x and updated y should be one or nine because if it's nine also we can go to that so uh, we can write this as like this um temp x temp y m n n and we have to write an area of temp y double equals to one or so there should be an or condition which signifies that the temp x and the temp y double equals to nine and also we have to keep the distance of temp x temp y is equal to minus one so this signifies this is an unvisited node so we are going to push temp x and temp y we are going to push temp x and temp y in the queue and we are going to update the distance of temp x and temp y as one plus the distance that we already saw for x and y because we are going one step further and in all these cases if a suitable path is returned that means area x y equal to 9 then we are going to return that distance else what we are going to do is we are going to return minus 1 as the question suggests now that forms the entirety of this particular problem uh, I think this is so in this case we are going to return it as minus 1 so you hope the brackets so in this case, let us, uh, this should be the algorithm in our case, and let us try it with one um, sample input as given in the question. So area should be like so. Let us try with one zero zero. Uh, one zero zero and one comma nine comma one, which should be ideal in this case. And we are going to see out the minimum paths of the area. So we are going to see out that in the area. Uh, and this is the overall algorithm that what I think would give a correct solution. So let us try this implementation. And it gave a solution of three. Now let us try to build a different graph to test whether this is correct or not. So if I were to replace this particular as zero, okay, zero. And if I were to replace this, this let us keep like this. So there is virtually like no reachable path from the top left. So in this case, there is no reachable path from the top left to the middle of the third row. So in this case, this should be returned as minus one. And it is returned as minus one, which is correct. So I think this, this should be a proper solution to this particular problem.
here also it should return as one and two. So ideally this should return, oh, so since this cannot go diagonal ways, so it cannot be two. So had it, had it gone, had it been able to go in the diagonal, then also it would have given a value of two. But since it can only move in up, right, left and down. So in that case, this is not a state. Diagonal is not a state, feasible state. So that is why it is returning as minus one. So this should be a proper solution to this uh, BFS uh, problem or graph problem, which is which was asked in this interview. And uh, there is an alternate solution with DFS as well, but I doubt the uh, possibility of DFS because DFS runtime will it will be exceeding a lot. So points where DFS is not an appropriate approach uh, is because uh, in DFS, we have to compute all the possible paths. And even if we apply memoization, so let's say we are going to apply memoization, we are keeping our, our distance to the matrix just to memoize our results. In that case also, this would not be giving a correct solution because some uh, suboptimal paths uh, may be present in the optimal path, in the optimal trajectory. So because we only have to take the paths which are at a minimum distance at a particular level. So if we go in a level-wise manner and we find the sh shortest route from the source to that particular point, uh, by, by BFS strategy, we are bound to reach by the shortest path to the terminal point, if there is a, if there is a feasible path from the starting to the terminal point. So keeping that in mind, DFS is not a pro appropriate approach for this because DFS tends to find all the possible paths by either by backtracking or by memoization. So this should be a proper solution of uh, this coding problem or coding interview question. It's a beautiful question. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next video. So if you like the content, uh, please subscribe and give a like. Also share your views in the comments. Is there any alternate way to do this problem? And I will be covering more such interview questions which are asked, which are mostly related to graphs. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.